Hey, this is Schrodinger Cat. I'm back to do another tutorial, kind of explaining some of the things you can do with all these crazy shapes that I showed you how to make in my uh, anti-voxel string shapes and airships tutorial. And um, first, I just wanted to show some of the neat things you can do with inlays. Um, you can do these with microvoxels too, and regular voxels, but with microvoxels, you're going to get dimpling in the wall. And I'll show first with a microvoxel and then with a string. Uh, and the reason you get that dimpling in the wall is because the shape is not one full voxel in length, width, or height, so it sucks in and makes a little dent. And as you go along, you know, throughout the inlay, it gets worse and worse. Um, so when I was making this clock, I used the inlay technique using the zero data voxel thing to paste it directly into the wall. Um, and these are basically placeholder marks to show me where I need to put my, my strings. So this was off of Govinda's swap meet palette that I managed to get, otherwise I wouldn't be able to show you any of these things because they're currently bugged and I can't make any templates at all. So if I paste it directly into the wall as a string, it's going to go flat I like to pull it out so I see where I'm going. So I make this perfectly nice, smooth, flat clock face. And then for the hands, I can actually pull out my shapes um, that are little angular ramps. And I'll just to show you. They're nice and flush with the wall, so there's no denting whatsoever. Um, and then I, I would have continued to make these little dots here around the surface, but it's kind of boring to watch me negotiate the tool getting it in there because I'm not the speediest builder. I'm also not a good builder either. Uh, let's see. So anyway, you get the idea there on the hands. Um, and you can do this to make any number of shapes and it's just going to go straight into the wall without any kind of deforming until you get near another one, in which case it will start to deform. And it's up to you whether or not you want it to do that. You end up some crazy designs or whatever. I don't do a lot of inlays, so... That's what I did to make the digits around the clock face that I made on the last day of Alpha. And then to make the hands, I take these, this shape here, which probably not many people have bothered with since it's kind of a weird shape. It's not a, it's not a ramp. It's like half of a, a ramp. But the way this one works is if you touch the flat surface, the side here, to a regular voxel, it's not going to deform. If you touch the, any of the other sides, though, it will. Um, so, oops, helps if I have it oriented properly. So, I can do this all along the wall and make clock hands, and they'll stand out from the surface of the clock and not dent the wall. So that's just like a real basic thing you can do. Now, I wanted to show also, I said I never use microvoxels anymore, and that's not exa exactly true. Let's say I want to build something that needs to be thin all the way through. I can't do that with just strings, because if I did, I would have to make it, you know, say I wanted to do a chair, for instance. I would have to make it have a thick seat, like this. What if, what if I didn't want a thick seat? What if I wanted to have a nice, um, nice thin seat. I guess it would be more of an ottoman, I don't know. Then I would need to weave the two of them together, and that's where it gets kind of fun, in my opinion, um, is finding a, a way to put all these shapes together to make something. Like I've made house roofs that can touch the wall. And I can't see what I'm doing. Where is it? It's like my whole way of seeing shapes is, is gone, unless I use the tweak tool and then I just have to kind of guess now. I 
Okay, so it looks like that's about right. So... <laughs> nope. So... Anyway... Just getting it to line up, so it's a total pain when you can't see what you're doing. Because uh, the shape disappears now when I'm trying to put it down. So, okay, so here's a microvoxel that's probably around the same width until we can get them, um, get our smooth tool back where it can refine stuff a little better. They're not going to match exactly because we don't have as many steps in the width of microvoxel, uh, of antivoxels as we do of microvoxels. Um, so, I've got them lined up here and, and they're going to act like that. So that one's too thick. Oh. I think I got that one then. Okay, so there we go. Looks like I got it lined up. So it's going to flange out a little bit since they're not exactly the same width. Um, and there are some that are closer in size, but they're smaller, and I just wanted to, you know, for this purpose, kind of show ones that are closer. So you see I, I'm using the microvoxel when I want to get the seat, because I want that nice thin seat, and I don't want a big fat seat, but I want thin legs that aren't going to deform the ground. So to weave them together, you do just like you do with a regular microvoxel, and you're going to snap the connection back together. And when you attach it, kind of, when I touch the microvoxel back to this corner, it pins it back in place. So I can go ahead and continue on with getting my nice shape. Uh, let's see, I think that was the one I had picked out for my string. Now the thing is, when you go back and you put the string on the legs, you're going to have to get the microvoxel back out to pin it back down. Because you can't go up with the string, you see now it's crooked. But if I go down, you know, and get to the ground, if I do the strings first and then connect the seat, and then there's a little less back and forth. But I wanted to show what you'd do. You see it snapped the, made the microvoxel thicker when I did it down to the ground. But we can fix that once we get out the microvoxel I picked out and pin it back into place. It's just fantastically hard to see. Apparently this one is not a perfect square either, it looks like from the shape. See, I'm, I'm pinning it back in place. And you can continue to work the strings and the voxels together to make um, a coherent shape. As long as you remember to use the microvoxels as connectors and pin them back down once you connect the string back to it. Or you manage you remember to only work in a certain order. And see, I managed to get something that's thin on all sides, but does not deform the ground. And now if you want to get really tricky, you can start working in other shapes. Um, I made a stair ramp that I needed railing on. I didn't want to have the railing touch the wall because I wanted to be fancy and have it like stick out from the wall and be like literal handrails. So I used these. This is the only thing I could not fix. And the reason for this, if you notice, um, this bends down. This is a separate shape. I'm going to paint them so you can see them. That is this shape over here. And the reason I used that is because it was, I didn't like the sharp end here and it was twisting this out of the way. So this kind of pinned these two shapes the way I wanted them. But I did the same principle I did over here with the table. These are strings. This is a string. This is a string. 
and I did that times two. And you'll see over here that it's this shape right here. That's what I used to do that. And then I wanted this thin railing, so I got out one of the microvoxels that's a little bigger. I think it's this one here. It's the one that you get by smoothing it down four times. And I made the railing and then pinned it back into shape. And you can just repeat this all the way up. And I had the wall, you know, it can touch the wall without deforming the wall. Um, you have to build it onto the wall. You can't put the wall on after the fact or it deforms it horribly. So, I'll just put it against the wall to show what I mean. You can see there's no deforming it. So you can see it didn't pull the wall or anything like that. Just, as I said, the reason this is there is because it did actually make this get bigger for whatever reason. And so this little shape kind of pulled it down and you can only see it when I paste it. And this right here is actually just shadowing. And you can even fix the wall. But apparently not. Oh wait, that's just shadows. Okay, never mind. You don't have to fix the wall because that's nice and smooth. Just since I pasted it in like that, it tends to deform, so I would have to go back in and fix it up just here on the edge. But that's how you can weave the different shapes together to make uh, nice combinations. Another example would be if I wanted to make an awning over a, a window. For instance, I would use this rail here, the same shape I used to make the rail. I'm just going to do it three times. I hope I'm close to the wall. It didn't pop me out. Okay, I am. see it bends it in, which you can either fix and get a little bit of deformation, or you can toss in this other tool. See, it's going to deform no matter what, because it wants to snap this back out to as close to a full voxel as it can. So what I do is I take this half of a ramp here that I used to make the clock hands. I'm going to stick it here on top. And either it fixes it or it does not. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think I have to rotate it. Yeah. So if you repeat that, you know, all the way out, you can do that over a roof or make a roof corner and get a nice little perfect roofy shape and make, I don't know, whatever kids make these days, outhouses or something, I'm not sure. And it doesn't pull or deform the wall. Um, and one other thing you can do with the shapes that's super useful that you can't really do with much else is um, you can sculpt with them and kind of get around some of the stupidity the smooth tool does to things. So when you stick it on a sculpture shape 
there's an added shape. If you are careful about where you put the uh, strings, they're not going to totally blow your shape up, right? So let's say I wanted to do, I wanted to make a sculpture and I was smoothing it and the smooth tool decided to just destroy it. I'm going to run out of obsidian here. I'm uh, making a, a blob. But see, actually, I've already done some damage to it. So let's say I wanted to patch that. So what I would do is I'd stick my little shape down. The shape probably will not do it. It depends on the shape, how it fixes it. For this shape, I'll probably want to fill it with a triangle. So you get to kind of experiment with the shapes you have. And that shape is not actually on this wall. Okay, so I would try this one. The one I the one I have is not actually here. I need to get it from another part of the wall. So you see it kind of looks like it would fill the void that I've left here for my bad sticking them togetherness. You see it's going to leave an angle on one part, but it's going to smoothly join the pieces in the other part. And I can repeat it for everywhere I've kind of broken the connection between the two shapes. Well, except there. Apparently. And now that I've... it, it may look like I've totally trashed it, but if I go in and smooth, it's going to join the two of them together like it was supposed to be that way all along. And now I'll just I'll trash it with smooth some so you see what I what the smooth tool how it can be fixed. Oh, the one time the smooth tool doesn't trash something. Well, normally it takes big chunks out of it by now, and I'm looking at a big mess of spikiness. Okay, so we'll, we'll ignore that for now. I'm going to make some shapes over here. Let's say I'm just going to use this ramp shape I've got here, and I'm going to show you can smooth these. all by themselves. And the bigger the string shape, the more you can smooth it. So some of these other ones will take a lot more smoothing than these guys. And they'll actually lose volume just like everything else though, so don't, you know, be surprised when they vanish on you. Huh, that's actually kind of cool. So if I took this shape, just out of curiosity, oh, I pasted air onto it. Anyway, that's some of the things you can do with the weaving of the different shapes together and combining it with microvoxels to get super thin all throughout shapes um, and inlays that don't dimple your wall and then still behave the same way you would expect to inlay to and accept smoothing um, because you can smooth, you know, in here to blend them together, whereas you couldn't really with a microvoxel after a certain point. So, um, and of course, repair on your smoothing tool when it actually breaks something, instead of the one time it miraculously doesn't. Uh, I hope that helps you guys with the antivoxel and some uses for it. Uh, have fun exploring.